Hi, my name is Thomas Johnson, and I'm the founder and CEO of Get Up and Get Fit Wellness and Fitness Coaching Concierge. I'm also a C-suite advisor and investor, and you're listening to How May I Serve You, where I'm constantly on the quest to surround myself with the best coaches while learning how to better serve our executive clientele by asking them what they want and need directly. And today's guest is Tom Chatfield. Tom, what's going on? Hey, I'm doing really well. I'm in uh, British Columbia, Canada. I'm looking out the window. We've got a hell of a lot of snow. And uh, i got to be really honest, after this podcast, I'm going to blow off the afternoon and go skiing. <laughs> there you go. That's awesome right there. So Tom is the CEO of Chamber Aviation Management, a team of experts that guide and manage the complex process of transforming an airliner into a corporate jet. From selecting the right aircraft to cabin design, engineering, fabrications, and certification through to deliver of the finished jet. Tom's passion is to push the barriers of what is possible in large cabin completions, delivering the best aircraft individually tailored to the requirements of Chambers clientele. Woo, Tom, that sounds amazing. Sounds good, you know, when you, when you read it, it sounds better than when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, also Tom is a good friend of mine as well. We both, we both, um, we both handsome men with the bald heads. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> there we go. So Tom, I'm gonna ask you some questions, man. Um, so tell me about what your typical week looks like as an executive. What uh, my typical week is, it doesn't exist. <laughs> I'll be really honest. So uh, pre-COVID, um, part of the time is spent in the office. Quite a bit of my time. I'd say almost a third of it is spent traveling around the world. Um, the business that we're in is, is really working with high net worths, with corporations, heads of state. And we take, uh, we take their vision of, a, of what a corporate jet could be, whether it's an Airbus or a Boeing. And we take that airliner and we turn it into, uh, turn it into an incredible aircraft. And we work with all kinds of interesting people, designers, completion centers, artisans, engineers. So in order to make all of this work, um, Myself and my team, we're allowed to live anywhere we want in the world because it's never going to be where you're really working, right? So we spend a lot of time in Europe and in the United States uh, working at those completion centers, overseeing the whole project. And, uh, and so you got to travel. So um, that's part of it. The, the rest of it is, is working from my home office. Um, as I said, each one of us are working from home. And um, I think we do an, an awful lot of Zoom and Skype meetings and phone calls and, and waving of arms to try to figure out things and, uh, and put our heads together and find solutions. So it's, it's not a normal week ever. It's always different. Sounds exciting. It sounds like you're a person that lives on the edge. You know, that's, that's amazing right there. So, Tom, um, I know I share a little bit about yourself, but I want you to share a little bit more about who you are, where you're from, and why you started in the first place. Ah, good. Okay. So, um, yeah, I've, I've been passionate about aviation all my life. I was fortunate. My father was a fighter pilot and uh, he taught me how to fly. Um, I didn't follow his path to, uh, to become a professional pilot. I thought, uh, I thought fixing things was going to be a lot better. So, you know, I, I was doing an apprenticeship up in Northern Canada and we were working on an airplane one night and we were outside and it was snowing and it was minus 40 and my hands are freezing. And I'm talking to the guy beside me and I said, who are those guys inside drinking coffee? And he said, oh, those are the really smart guys. Those are the avionics guys. They do the electronics. And I'm looking at my blue hands and I said, shit, I'm not going to do this anymore. They get paid more and they get coffee, right? So I went into avionics and uh, yeah, I was really fortunate. I had some really interesting opportunities in life and, uh, and worked in corporate aviation for, well, more than 20 years now. Wow, wow. That's amazing right there. It's funny because... um. When people ask me um, about Tom, I normally tell them, so Tom is like the paint my ride, the, the paint my airplane, just like the paint my ride show that <laughs> MP had a few years back. So Tom, paint the airplane. <laughs> yeah, I guess he that. yeah. Um, yeah, we do some pretty interesting stuff. We, it's very different because, you know, it's, 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 uh, we, we work for a client and we, we basically try to figure out what they need, what their requirements are, what their tastes are, what they're looking for, whether it's a long range airplane for a couple of people or if they want to travel with an entourage. And then we, uh, we work with all these fantastic people to make it uh, to turn that vision or that idea into reality. And I think the biggest challenge and what I like the most about it is the fact that we're building a prototype. You know, Rolls Royce and Porsche, they can build 100 prototypes and they go out and test the hell out of them. We have one. 
and it's got to work the first time. So, you know, that's a, uh, it's a big challenge. We have a great team of people, lots of really good ideas and, and we try to make it work as, as good as we possibly can. So that when the client gets in the airplane for the first time they are, uh, it's magic and, uh, and it's cool. It's cool. So Tom, I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's amazing right there because what you do is, is customization at its elite level. Cause you have yeah. one chance one chance to make it work because <laughs> you work right. with you're working with bowling you work with huge jet engines man you work with huge jets so yeah. um and i know that there a lot of a lot of lot of money goes into the process so um i would like you to share with us some of your amazing amazing success stories man if you're my share well it's always hard because we got all these incredibly tight ndas but what we can say is that the team was involved in uh, the first boeing 787 that was turned into a corporate jet um it was uh it was presented the world in 2016 and uh was just recently sold for a second time uh, incredible airplane instead of 280 seats it's got 40 seats so um yeah there's a little bit of leg room it's a pretty comfortable airplane uh, we've also done some head of state uh, 747s. We've done uh, some Airbus 3320s. We've done a, a myriad number of airplanes, and both from brand new to someone who says, you know what, I'm going to buy a pre-owned airplane. I want you to rip out the interior and do something absolutely new. So uh, all of them are really interesting projects, and all of them are a good challenge. Nice, nice. So are there any limitations to what you could do with a plane, the airplane? Yeah, there are. I mean, we have to... <laughs> Yeah, you know, we have to certify it and it has to be, it has to be, first of all, legal, but it has to be safe. That's the biggest thing, you know? Yes. So um, some crazy things that people want, we've had things like, can you put in a fireplace? Uh, no, no fireplace is hard to do. Um, we've had someone say, can you put in a jacuzzi? No, that doesn't work either. But uh, we've done an awful lot of cool things. We've done, for example, it, you know, you're big into wellness and, and that. We've put in uh, a fitness studio in the back. We have, uh, we've done a steam shower, um, you know, like a hammam, so you can have a, you know, really feel rejuvenated when you, when you land. We've done some pretty cool things. We've done some cool things. That sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. So um, knowing how hard you work and how full your schedule is, have you experienced help, any health and wellness um, challenges? Yeah, I, I would say uh, the two biggest ones I've had are, are really exhaustion from just working really hard and especially time time zone differences, you know, flying from Vancouver to Dubai, it's a 14 hour flight at a 12 hour time difference um, and headaches, had a lot of headaches. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So what have you done to overcome these challenges though? Uh, good question. <laughs> um, what I've done is I've always exercised all my life um, with COVID. It meant that you couldn't go out quite as much. So uh, I work out in our gym at least five times a week, nice. but um, but what I did start doing recently, and it's a, it's a new regime, and I'll have to be honest, it's not mine. I, I was watching a lot of uh, Jay Shetty, and I like a lot of his philosophy and how he thinks. Yeah, and, and there's a couple things he did, and I started thinking about it and started doing it, and I think it's super. So, so the first thing I do is when I get up in the morning, I don't look at my phone. I, I don't do that. Nice. So, and I've got this nice sign now in the bathroom. It reminds me, think about what the things you're grateful for. And I do that while I'm brushing my teeth. Normally I'm thinking I'm great that I've still got teeth. So that's got that's <laughs> the first one right there, right? So um, I think thinking about that, bringing a, sort of centering yourself in the morning starts really well. I don't do emails until I've had a good coffee. Okay. And then uh, then I try midday to always do a, a meditation for 15 or 20 minutes. Take some time, find uh, find a place for myself and and do a short meditation. I'm just a beginner. I'm definitely not a professional at it, but I'm finding it's really good to help sort of center yourself and, and bring yourself down to reality. It's too easy to get all uptight and get moving. Um, yeah. I think that's big. And then in the afternoons, I always go for a half hour walk. We have fantastic fresh air out here in the mountains, clears your brains, lets you uh, think about other things. And if you've got a really complex problem, man, you normally have a solution by the end of your walk. I'm, I'm always amazed at how your brain works that way. Yeah, I mean, especially living where you live. You live in um, Canada, right? And you have, you, I'm pretty sure you're right. You're, um, if, if I'm not mistaken, you're, you're by the woods, right? Are you by the woods? Or am yeah, I so, so we actually live in the mountains. And uh, I'm looking out. I can see the glaciers, the mountains. And we've got a view all the way down to the ocean. So, yeah, we're, we're in a fantastic place. But there's, there's one other thing that I've done for the last 20 years, and it's fantastic. And that is I used to work as a, as a canoe guide when I was going to college and a, and a raft guide. Oh, wow. What I, 
what I do every summer with my wife is we go canoeing for at least a week and we don't have cell service a whole week. My team knows how to work. They're fantastic. I trust them. And one week of not having any cell service, no emails, no nothing is the most rejuvenating thing that you can imagine. It is so good for you. Wow. Wow. That's a, that's amazing. I mean, sometimes we have to detox ourselves from technology, right? So it seems like you do this every, every year. So do you do this once, once a year, or do you have like a few times throughout the year where you just unwind and unplug? I unwind and I plug quite a few times a year. I try to take my phone and, uh, and basically turn it off and only look at it once or twice on a weekend. Um, but on the, um, once a year, I take a week to, to not, seven to nine days. We go canoeing and definitely no phone on that trip. That's great. It's definitely, definitely awesome idea. So while you're, while you're um, taking these trips, um, do you have like a tier system um, that you, your, your, your team follow while you're away? Because I know sometimes fire occurs, right? I mean, as, as CEOs and executives, sometimes we have to put out fires. But how do you deal with that? I mean, how, how do you deal with that? What kind of systems do you put in place to um, take care of oh, that? First of all, I think the most important thing is you have to trust your team. You have right. to trust the people you work with. And if you've worked with them long enough, and, and we've worked together for, oh, most of us have worked together for at least 10 years in various different companies in here, you know how each other think. And, you know, what I always say is if I'm not available, guys, I trust you. Make the best possible decision. Nice, I nice. think that's important. I think that's really important. And it works. It really works. I think you have to empower people. And I think that the idea of always spewing out the idea of a team, you have to live the team. You know? So what would you say your um, leadership style is like, though, Tom? This, this right here, the, the way you're describing your team, the, um, the structure you have in place, it's amazing. Um, how, would you, how would you describe your leadership um, style? I would say that my, um, I'm, I'm a little bit pedantic sometimes on some things. Um, a very, very detail focus. I think that's just the way I am. Um, so sometimes it's very good because the team bring me down and say, hey, Tom, you know, you don't have to go to that level of detail <laughs> at this thing. But um, I think we're very complimentary, all of us. Everyone's got uh, a huge amount of experience in aviation. Um, some of it's very complimentary. We've worked in the same areas. But um, I think the biggest thing is, is, is being able to go out to the team and say, look, this is the problem right now. Let's start working on it. And push it over to them, let them start working it, and then start figuring out uh, what those solutions look like and if we can implement it. And um, I think the hardest thing is, is letting go of the rain sometimes and letting people run with something. But the last few years have shown the more you do that, the better the result. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's, a, that's amazing right there. Empowering the team and allow them to um, work out the kinks. You know, it, it, builds, it builds resistance, it builds resilience. And it's, it's very hard. It's hard for all of us, I think, to, to let go of the reins. You have to do it progressively. Um, I find myself quite often jumping in and trying to, to, to do the whole leadership thing and dominate. And you have to either you get a kick from someone from the team says, hey, Tom, come on, take a step back. Or you have to say, oh, I'm, I, have to, I have to be aware of what I'm doing. So uh, it's a learning process. None of us are perfect. And it takes time. Definitely, definitely. And I know while you're out there in Canada, you do a lot of um, snowboarding. Do you snowboard or do you ski? No, I don't no, know. no, no, no. We don't snowboard. We, we ski up here. Come on. We ski. Okay. <laughs> the young guys, they snowboard. <laughs> the young guys snowboard. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, I've, I've actually I tried. I've tried snowboarding once, um, and I was not the best. <laughs> but um, skiing. But I still, I still, I still, I still need to try um, skiing. Um, well, We'll get you out here and get you skiing, Thomas. Yeah, yes, indeed. That sounds like a great plan. So what advice would you give to another executive about staying on top of the game? Huh, that, that's a good question. Um, it, it's what I think everybody struggles with. I think one of the first things, and everyone is always preaching it, but I, I think it's time, trying to really learn it, and that is find time for yourself. You know, we all have obligations with 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 our business and trying to grow the business or in, in the case of COVID trying to keep the business, you know, alive. Um, and we have our family obligations and our, our friend obligations, but I think it's really important that each of us finds time for ourselves, even if it's just a small amount every day. Um, and, and the easiest way for me to do it is I just block it in my calendar and, you know, I have my meditation block or my walk block and I just never book anything on top of it. It's, it takes a while to get used to it because it's so easy to say, ah, I have an important call. I'm just going to push it out of the way. Yeah. But I've learned not to do that, and I'm a better person for it. I think that's really good. 
Um, I think the other thing is don't touch the phone when you get up. And how often is it going to be good news? You know, like this many times, right? So you wake up, it's a new day, you got a chance, push the phone away for another 15 minutes, go have a good shower, get up, think about some positive stuff, make a really good coffee, and then you can hit your phone. So I think that works really well. Um, go. And I think the other thing is find a coach, find a mentor, find someone who you've got huge amounts of respect for. And, and that person, if you trust them, and you should, um, they're going to give you, you know, unfiltered, objective opinions. They'll give you some guidance. They'll once in a while put you on a path when you're tending to, to go off in a different direction. I, um, I always thought, why do I need a coach or, or why do I need a mentor? Um, I was lucky someone came to me and said, I'd like to be your mentor. So, and I opened my eyes and went, wow, you can learn so much, right? And then uh, I've had uh, Mike Scribnack as, as my coach now for the last oh, year and a half. And not only is it insightful, every time when I walk out of a meeting with him, I think, geez, why didn't I think of that? You know? So it's that, uh, it's that different perspective, a different way of, of looking at things. And, and as you build that bond or that, that trust, um, they get to know you, they get to know your business and, and it becomes more and more tailored and more and more insightful. So I think that's a, a huge advantage, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely agree with you. Um, I mean, every coach needs a coach. Every executive needs a coach. It makes you better, right? Being able to, plus it allows you to think outside of the box as well. So um, we all need that support system. We all need that support system. Even if we don't know it, but we all need that support system. And, being social creatures, you can only benefit from it, right? You can only benefit from the rights of people. Of course, yeah, the support system has to have to be the right support system, of course. Um, so with that, being, with that being said, Tom, what what were the criteria um, that you made sure your coach checked off before you hired the coach? That was good. Um... I'm not a tall guy, so I didn't want someone that I'd have to be looking up to. <laughs> <laughs> um, I need a coach that um, that was um, someone who was insightful, someone that didn't work in my industry because otherwise you're going to get blinders, right? Yes. Um, I think you need someone who's within your reach and that's approachable. Um, now, they may be physically just down the street or at least they're at the end of a phone that you can reach to. I'm a personable person. I like to sit down across a table or – at a sofa and have a chat over coffee and really understand things. So for me, having someone close by is really important. And, um, and someone who after that first conversation, I think it's, and I think it's important to have that sort of informal conversation before you talk about business. It's to see if your characters click, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's gotta, there's gotta be a bit of a mesh there. And there has to be that, I think that aha effect where you go, wow, this person knows a lot of things about stuff I don't. So mm -hmm. there's an opportunity to learn right there. Yes, indeed. I agree with you 100%. So are you currently working on any new projects that you could share with us that's not within the NDA? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're doing a, a couple of things. We're doing some Boeing, uh, one Boeing business jet. A gentleman wanted to buy a pre-owned airplane. Uh, right now, the, the cost is super attractive. And we're going to rip out the whole interior and put in a brand new interior for him, uh, which Boeing couldn't do. You know, so... Um, although the airplane is 10 years old and has, uh, has a few hours on it, it's nothing like the airliners. It hasn't flown itself to, you know, it hasn't been like a, like a horse that's ridden every single day. It's only ridden once in a while. So, um, good pedigree, good mechanics. It's a, it's a, it's a clean slate to work on. So I'm really looking forward to that. Nice. And another thing, another thing we're doing is we like to give back. We've got uh, a local high school here. In fact, the high school my son had gone to. And, uh, and I teach a, an aeronautics course there every year to the grade sevens and eights. And it's pretty interesting. You know, at first they're like, oh man, this is gonna be boring. But it becomes really interesting. We do a lot of talks about videos. We, we built a, a wind tunnel. The kids get to test uh, wing shapes and see how they respond and stuff. And uh, they get really excited about that. And then last week we had a paper airplane contest and the, uh, the contest was three different categories. It was for distance, it was endurance and the coolness effect. Right. So uh, the, uh, the kid said, well, what's cool? And I said, I don't know. I'm, I'm too old. you got to tell me what's cool, man. And uh, we had 30, 33 kids, two different classes. And uh, we had the school gymnasium and we threw paper airplanes for a couple of hours. And uh, we had a hoot. And 
at the end of it, they said, well, what's the prize? I mean, this was a contest, right? So I said, the prize is pretty cool, I think. What we're doing here is uh, we're renting airplanes with an instructor in uh, as soon as spring comes, and all you guys get to go flying. So they all say, well, that's great. I said, yeah, but the top one third, you guys get to sit in the left seat. You're going to get your first flying lesson. Oh, that's yeah. really sweet. Super pumped. And the other two thirds said, well, well, what are we going to do? I said, well, you're sitting in the back. You get a GPS receiver and a map, and you're going to be the navigators. We're going to do geocaching around the mountains here. You've got to guide that new pilot all the way around and back to the airport. So we did it a couple of years ago. The kids were just totally wild about it. Uh, one of the young men, he uh, became a pilot. He actually enrolled in fly school after that, or flying wow. school. And another uh, young man uh, entered uh, university this year and started uh, aeronautical engineering. So I guess there's a bit of a success there, but it's a lot of fun, you know. That's that's the ripple effect right there, you know. Um, you threw a little stone into a pond, and that ripple effect occurred. Now these students are, have been influenced, um, and they have experienced something as amazing as flying a plane, as aeronautics, right? So this is uh, this is awesome. I mean, this this is the beauty of mentorship, right? This is the beauty of exposing children to things they wouldn't normally be exposed to. And you're doing it with your program, Tom, and I commend you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's great. And you know what the other thing is, quite a few of the kids after the flight came down and they went, I never knew I lived in such a beautiful place. There you go. So that's, it's not just the flying part, it's getting to see the world from a different angle, right? Exploration, there you go. So Tom, if someone were to inquire about your services or just want to connect with you, where can they find you? Uh, quite easy. We have a, a website. I think everyone does now. Um, it's uh, camberaviation.com, spelled C-A-M-B-E-R. And um, yeah, we have a, you can connect with us directly by email there and uh, happy to have a call and have a chat with people about different ideas. Nice, nice. So thank you everyone for coming and Tom, Thank you for coming through today and blessing us with such amazing information. Your story is phenomenal. So if you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to share it with someone that will benefit from listening. And last but not least, Tom, how may I serve you? Uh, you're already doing it with your inspirational videos and, and blogs and the conversations that you and I have on the phone once in a while. I always have a great time talking to you. Thank you. You're welcome. There you go. With that being said, you guys have a great one. And tune in for next week. Take care. Thank you.